Hello and welcome to this Final Fantasy XIV bite-sized breakdown, where today we're taking a look at the class and jobs of Final Fantasy XIV. Our first class is the Gladiator, and one of my personal favourites, it's a tanking class that uh, primarily uses, if I say primarily, it only uses swords and shields. Um, it's uh, a class that starts in Uldar, the desert city, uh, or if you choose another class to start with, you can pick up the Gladiator skill at level 10 by visiting the Gladiator, um, <coughs> Gladiator's Guild in Uldar. Um, gladiators primarily wear plate mail, plate mail and chain mail, and they are most effective when they've got both a sword and a shield equipped. Although you can fight with just a sword, you lose access to a lot of defensive abilities and, uh, well, in fact, you take a lot more damage in general. Uh, the primary stat is Vitality, which buffs their max HP. Um, again, if you're going to be tanking, or in fact, you will be tanking if you're a gladiator, there's no real option there about it, um, you can expect to, uh, to take a lot of damage, so you want the health to compensate for it. Gladiator's damage is a bit meh. As you can see in the video, it does take me a little while to kill some of the mobs in here, and as you'll see as we move through into the DPS classes, that suddenly becomes a lot quicker. Um, this is offset by the fact they can take a beating. I mean, they can take a serious beating. Um, they are designed to just absorb all of that aggro from the enemies and, and just eat it. Um, as mentioned, they are a tank class, so a lot of their abilities focus on building what's known as Enmity, which uh, forces your enemies to attack you, and I'll cover more about that when I come into dungeons and groupings in another video. Um, the primary function of this gladiator, as I said, is to, to draw the aggro of the enemy and to keep it away from the party, or if you're out soloing, it's just going to be to survive while you beat things in the face. Now, one other thing I should mention about the uh, all the classes, really, is that they're capable of taking what are called cross-class actions. So, any class can inherit from uh, some abilities from another class. Not all abilities are up for grabs, and you must have leveled that other class to the relevant prerequisite level. So, for example, I have a spell called Protection, or Protect, which actually comes from the Kundra at level 8. Now, because I've leveled my Kundra to level 8, I've then hopped to my Gladiator, and I can then choose that from the spellbook. Under other abilities, I can select the previous Kundra tree, which is now available, click on Protect, drag it to my action bar, which gives me a little bit of extra protection. In this way, this actually helps you build up uh, the more uh, classes you've leveled up, the, uh, the more abilities you have access to. Um, but on top of that, there's also the jobs section. Now, I've mentioned jobs in a couple of videos, and I haven't really gone into them in much more detail. So basically, jobs are an evolvement or, or an evolution of your uh, your class by default, but they require you to have both a primary class leveled up to 30 and a secondary class to 15. In Gladiator, this is Gladiator to 30 and Conjurer to 15, which then lets you access the Paladin um, job. Now, the Paladin job is gained. Once you get to 30 on the Gladiator, you get given a quest to go and earn your Paladin job. Sorry, 30 on the Gladiator and 15 on your Conjurer, you get given a quest that then lets you go out do the quest and unlock the Paladin job stone. You can then equip that job stone, which will grant you access to the Paladin abilities as well, and it further evolves your class. If you want to, you could just play a standard gladiator all the way up, and jobs work in tandem. So if you if you equip a job stone and you're a guardian, and you you're a gladiator, sorry, and you equip a Paladin job stone, you become a Paladin. And as you level up, your, your Paladin will be at whatever level your Gladiator was. So if you're a level 35 Gladiator, you equip a Paladin Stone, you're a level 35 Paladin. If you then level up to 40 and unequip that stone, you're still a level 40 Gladiator. So the stone just acts as a modifier. It doesn't change your level or anything like that. It just literally acts as a modifier to what abilities you have available. It adds more flavour to your class. It's very similar. If you've played any of the fun, other Final Fantasy games, you'll recognise the jobs from those. It, it works in a very similar system. Now, next on the list is Marauder, but before I go into Marauder, there is something I should probably mention regarding all the melee classes in Final Fantasy, and that is the combo system that they use. Um, basically, attacks can be chained together, um, with the exception of Pugilist, which functions slightly differently, and I'll cover their sort of differences when I get to a Pugilist a bit later on. Um, you normally have your attacks chained together, so you'll do one attack, and then that will buff up the next attack in the sequence, and you can use that, and then that will possibly buff up a third attack. Um, the idea being is that while you can use those attacks on their own to do damage and to gain certain abilities and that, they're normally more powerful in a comboed sequence. Um, and the game encourages you to play those combos to, do, to, to be your most effective, really. Um, on top of that, there's also cross-skilling. So if you've got, um, say, a gladiator, um, as I have, level 28, 29, say 30, just to round it off. So you've got gladiator level 30, and you've got a conjurer at level... Uh, say 12, because I know that's when you get you get Protect at level 8, basically, on the Kundra, which is a, a defensive buff. Um, 
with cr the cross skilling, you can basically take protect out of that tree and put it on your gladiator. So you can access skills in another class's tree. Not all of them are up for grabs. Um, it's limited by what your class is and how high a level your class is, of how many of those skills you can take. But you can take abilities from other class trees. So you could take multiple defensive cooldowns from the, other, the various different classes. So you could cycle those if you wanted to. Granted, some of them are like 120 seconds cooldown, but if you got two or three of them, suddenly you've got a lot more defensive cooldowns available than you did have previously. Um, and that is something that you'll see getting used quite a lot, um, especially in these videos. I tend to take Protect just for reduced damage, uh, incoming damage, and normally Cure as well from my Conjurer because it just it prevents the just if I get stuck, I can self heal. Granted, it's not a brilliant self heal and it drains mana like nobody's business, but it will keep me alive. In, in a pinch, it will keep me alive. So anyway, on to the Marauder. Much like Gladiators, Marauders are a tank class, and they wear plate and chainmail, and again, vitality is their key stat. Their weapon of choice, however, is a two-handed axe, so no swords and shields with these guys. In fact, they don't carry any offhand weapons. It's a two-handed axe all the way. Go big or go home, I believe, is the Marauder motto. Um, they have a higher damage than Gladiator, but to offset that, they also take more damage. Um, which can be countered as you get more and more skills. You'll find some of those skills grant you defensive abilities like self-healing or damage mitigation. Um, very similar to the Death Knight in World of Warcraft is that you can cycle those moves in to reduce the damage you're taking or to, to heal you over time. Um, some of them even buff, I believe they buff your own healing as well at higher levels. Um, the job that's available for a Marauder is the Warrior. Um, again, it's a two-handed axe wielding class and that requires warrior to 30, uh, sorry, Marauder to 30 and Gladiator to 15. Um, at that point you can then take your, uh, your job quest and get your job stone and uh, start progressing down the path of the warrior. The next class on the list is the Pugilist. It's a melee DPS class and its primary stat is Strength, um, which basically increases its attack power. Now, Pugilists are the odd one out when it comes to the combo system that I mentioned earlier that affects the other melee DPS. Um, Pugilists have three forms. They start in Opo Opo, um, they then can use an attack which will put them into Raptor form, and then from Raptor form they can finally go into Coerl form. Now, those forms are limited to certain abilities. So, for example, as you can see at the moment, one of my action bars is greyed out. The, the, the skill on number two, which is True Strike, is greyed out because it requires me to be in Raptor form. So my first ability, Boot Shine, puts me into Raptor form, then I can follow up with that. Um, the third form um, is, as I said, Opo Opo. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. The third form is Coerl, and that allows you to use something like, so for example, Snap Punch is the final combo move I could put in there. Now Snap Punch grants a rather nice buff called Grease Lightning and it resets you back to Opo Opo form as well. So basically Grease Lightning is, is what you want to aim for as a pugilist. You want, once you've started fight you want to get Grease Lightning up and you want to keep it up. Um, it increases your damage dealt by 10% and your attack speed by 5%. Um, as you reach higher levels you can get more stacks of it as well. I believe you can stack 3 maximum at the moment. Um, so again, that's 30% attack speed, uh, sorry, 30% damage increase and 15% attack speed. You're suddenly going to be hitting a hell of a lot harder and a hell of a lot faster at that point in time. Now the other thing about monks is that they are they have quite a few position dependent moves. Normally you need to be behind your target to use some of them, um, but you do get a, you get a bonus for basically being behind the target at that point in time anyway. Um, they can't dodge, block or parry from behind, so you're always going to hit more often with that. Uh, the final thing with Pugilist is that their ev evolution is to Monk at level 30. Um, to do that you need Pugilist level 30 and Lancer to 15. Um, once you've got that, it's easy enough to take the uh, the relevant job quest and get your job stone. Again, I keep saying this, but it's basically level 30 when you've got the required other class. It's just do the quest, get the stone, equip the stone. Simple as that. Uh, Pugilists come from Uldar, and they can either, if you start as a Pugilist, you will start in Uldar. Obviously, if you didn't start as one, but you want to change to one, it's a simple case of getting to level 10, getting to Uldar, and then doing the Pugilist quest. Uh, sorry, going and visiting the Pugilist guild, who will give you the quest to become a Pugilist, basically. Um, so yeah, that's that for Pugilist. Next up is Lancers. Uh, Lancers are another melee DPS class. Um, they, again, like monks, use strength as their primary stat to increase their attack power. Their weapons of choice are spears, halberds, and tridents. Basically any kind of polearm. Uh, 
Lancers start from Gridania, and the Lancers Guild itself is also based in Gridania, so if you're picking one of them where you want to become one, that's where you've got to go. Uh, and at level 30 they can become a Dragoon, um, providing they've got um, Lancer level 30 and Marauder 15. Um, and again, Dragoon, if anyone's played the original Final Fantasy games, is exactly like that. You get your crazy jumpy moves and uh, your long thrusts and everything else, and it, it's rather quite cool. It, it's quite cool, I must admit. Uh, now, one thing I will mention, actually, it's that's pretty much covered all the basics of Lancer. And again, I've not played one a lot myself um, to go into much more depth on them. But you've probably noticed my control system on the screen has changed. I've actually enabled um, Joypad mode. And again, this is the game that was released on both PC and PlayStation 3 and 4. The controller mode is really well implemented. As you can probably tell, I'm having no trouble. I, I tap A to attack the target, lock on, I hold the right trigger and I can use the various moves. I can hold left trigger and access some other moves as well. Um, and it's, it's something worth bearing in mind that if you uh, ever just feel like grinding, just that you want to get some stuff ground out and you're not too fussed about tanking or anything else, you can plug a controller in and go for miles. Um, I will admit, I'm too used to tanking with a keyboard, I find it very hard to cycle through targets and do all the relevant tanking stuff with a joypad, um, but for just running around and killing things, I'm <laughs> I've been known to plug the joypad in and just spend a couple of hours just grinding stuff out, doing a few fates, things like that. Stuff that doesn't require the precision targeting that, that I feel that tanking does. Continuing the line of physical DPS, we've got archers next. However, archers are a ranged physical DPS. They are the only ranged physical DPS in the game until Heaven Sword, at which point uh, machines was also added. Again, I'm not going into Heaven Sword in these videos though, so if unless you've got that expansion, the only one you're getting out of this, is, if you want to play ranged DPS, is the archer. <coughs> Um, Archer's uh, key statistic is dex, uh, dexterity. Um, the more of that you've got, the more attack power they gain and the more damage they do. And they wear primarily leather armor or light, uh, medium armor, sorry, not light armor. Um, they get a rather nice selection of bows to use, and some of them I've seen people wandering around with some top quality, <laughs> top quality bows that are nearly twice the size of their characters themselves, which is uh, always fun to watch. Uh, they combo much like the uh, other melee classes, not including the pugilist. You fire one uh, one type of shot and you follow it up with another, um, and each one can sort of buff buff the next shot up, that kind of thing. Uh, at level 30, as long as you've got pugilist to 15, you can unlock the bard job. Um, it's very similar to the archer, with more support abilities thrown into the mix as well. Uh, archers also start in Gridania, so again, if you uh, pick an archer or you want to pick up the archer, the archery ability, uh, once you get to level 10, it's head to Gridania and visit the archers guild that's there. Rogues are next on the list, and much like any game that features rogues, they are a uh, dagger wielding class with stealth capabilities. Um, they well, they are uh, melee DPS focus, and they use as a daggers and leather armor. Their primary attribute is Dexterity, which increases their physical damage. They can poison their blades through a, uh, a buff ability that they get. Um, they can only have one of the Poison Blade style buffs active at any one time. Activating another one will turn the previous one off. At level 10 they get um, Stealth, or Hide as it's called, uh, which uh, makes them invisible to all, to, well, not to all enemies, but to any enemy that is within 10 levels of them. Any enemies higher than 10 levels can still see them, and enemies that have Stealth Sight can also see them. They can mug targets as well during battle, which is quite a cool ability, which basically means that if you use the mug ability and then kill the target, it increases the chance of items dropped from it. Um, you can use mug either any time during the fight or as a killing blow to get extra items from it. Lastly, at level 30, they uh, unlock the ninja ability combined with uh, uh, level 15 in Pugilist. And that is a uh, again a dagger wielding class, but ninja focuses more on using um, jujitsu style techniques um, and hand signals or hand signs to pull off certain moves. And again, it's it's not one I've been able to play with myself. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but from reading up on it and from watching uh, other sort of concepts of it, it looks quite interesting and unique. And hopefully, something I will cover off in the future once I eventually get a character up to that level. On to the Disciples of Magic now, starting with the Kundra. The Kundra is a healer, a uh, caster based healer, uh, and is the only one that's originally available in a Realm Reborn when it was first released. Um, there's now been added the Astrologian, I believe it is, for Heaven's Sword, so you've got more options if, if you picked up Heaven's Sword, you've got a few more options in there. Uh, they primarily use wands and staves, and they can also equip shields, and on top of that, they wear cloth armour as their primary armour type. 
Their primary stat is Mind, which increases their healing magic potency. Um, however, you can also get an ability uh, as you level up called Cleric Stance, which switches your Mind and uh, Wisdom stats and allows you basically to do greater damage while it's up. So Wisdom increases your um, phys your, your uh, attack spell damage, Mind increases... Uh, so, yeah. Wisdom is uh, attack damage, mind is healing damage, uh, healing potency, sorry, not healing damage, <laughs> healing damage, what are we doing? Healing the undead? No. Uh, at 30 they can become a white mage if they've got a level 15 arcanist as well, and that's the more classic white mage role that most people will recognise from the Final Fantasy games. Next up is Arcanist, and these are the pet class um, of the starting classes. They can summon at level uh, 5, I believe, they get to summon a little carbuncle. Uh, to help them out in battle. Now they're a DPS caster by default and they cast using books, those are their primary weapons and they uh, also wear cloth armor like the other caster types. Their primary stat is intellect since it's offensive damage that's what you need, offensive magic that's what you need is intellect to buff that up. However they do get some healing spells, uh, specifically physic, uh, which can do healing and is based off your mind ability. So uh, the, the division of skills or the division of stats I should say are always the same. Uh, intellect is your offensive damage capability, mind is your healing damage capability. Now, at level 30, an Arcanist can go one of two ways. They can either become a Summoner, which is a caster DPS and focuses more on having your pet and doing battle and, and using your pet to fight with you and buffing you up, or they can become a Scholar, which is a healing class. Um, it's also got a pet of its own, which is the, um, the like a Fey Fairy that helps you out, fly, flies you around, follows you around, and, and helps with your healing. Um, it's unusual because the Arcanist is the. Um, only one that can split up and go both ways when it reaches that level rather than just having one specific job it's designed to evolve into. Um, so for Summoner, it's level 30 in um, Arcanist and level 15 in Thermiturge or Scholar is level 30 in Arcanist again and level 15 in Conjurer. And again, depending on how you want to play it, you don't have to go into the healer role, you could just go full on DPS if you want and just take the Summoner one. Um, but it's nice to see that there are other options for healing as you level up as, as you probably heard in the um, Kundra video, Kundras were the only base class that had healing. Um, whereas now, with the um, as you get to higher levels and reach level 30, there are actually multiple healing classes available. So you've got both your Kundra and your um, Scholar from the base game, and then you've also got the um, Astrolo Astrologian, Astrologian, Astrologian from Heaven Sword. Lastly, but by no means leastly, the Thermiturge is the final uh, Disciple of Magic. Uh, it's another DPS caster class that uses staves and scepters as well as cloth armour. Um, and again, since it's a damage dealer it uses intellect to boost its um, magic damage. At level 30 they can become Black Mages. For those of you who have played the Final Fantasy VII games you know exactly how much of a powerhouse a Black Mage is. I believe they're pretty much the same <laughs> in Final Fantasy XIV. They're the glass cannons of the game, basically. Massive damage, but you really don't want to take a punch to the face. Now, they have a rather cool mechanic, I must admit, with these, is which is the Astral Fire Umbral Ice Balance. So, casting an Ice Spell will give you a stack of Umbral Ice. Umbral Ice reduces the mana cost and damage of your fire spells and increases your, man your, your ma magic point MP regeneration. Quite cool. Um, and It'll, that'll stay up as long as you keep casting ice spells. If you cast a fire spell, it'll get rid of the debuff, and then on the fire spell after that, you'll start acquiring um, astral fire. Uh, which uh, astral fire is uh, the, is almost like the opposite. It increases the damage and uh, MP cost of your fire spells, but significantly increases the damage. I should mention there. Um, and then reduces the cost and damage of your ice spells. The catch with the fire one is that although your damage is pushed through the roof, your mana regeneration stops. Um, so you kind of get to a point where you can fire off so many fireballs and then you've got to regenerate. It's a little bit similar to Balanced Druids in World of Warcraft before um, it got pushed into more of an automatic slidey mode. Um, so yeah, that's, that's those ones. Um, now, 
core part of the gameplay with the Thermatosion, the, the bit I do quite like that means I don't just spam ice constantly or fire constantly, is a spell called Transpose, which I believe you earn about level 8, um, which takes your current stack and converts it into the other one. So if you've got Umbral Ice and you cast Transpose, it becomes fire. So really, you could spam ice until you've got full mana, transpose to fire, spam fire until you've got no mana, transpose to ice, spam ice again. Uh, it, it's quite clever, because you've got to be switched on to what you're doing um, to do your optimal damage. Uh, it's quite cool. I, I, I do admit, pun intended there. Um, yeah, so in regards to the Black Mage job, that requires level 30 uh, of your Thermoturge and level 15 Archer. And that uh, then lets you take the job to become the powerhouse of destruction that is the Black Mage. So yeah, that's it. That's all, all the base classes in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I have no doubt in the future I'll probably put together a video for the uh, more advanced jobs as well as the uh, jobs that are added in Heaven Sword. And I also want to do something regarding the uh, Disciples of the Hand and Disciples of the Land, which are the crafting sections. But that can be for another video. Um, I've been Jason and this has been Bite Size Breakdowns. Thank you very much for watching.